did you fund a long-term care plan with Housing Wealth? And here to talk with me about that is Don Graves. He's the president of the Housing Wealth Institute, the author of three books on reverse mortgages, and an adjunct instructor at the American College of Financial Services. Don, welcome. Thank you, Bob. It's great to be back. It's great to have you back because I know a lot of people have this question on their minds, how can I use the wealth in my house to pay for long-term care expenses? But before we talk about that, it might be worth doing a little table setting on what a reverse mortgage is. <laughs> sure. I remind people that um, you ever mentioned reverse mortgages at the barbecue? I mean, what happened? Th three people went under the table, three people left the table, and your Aunt Janie made a shank out of a plastic knife and fork and tried to get you. So mentioning, mentioning reverse mortgages <laughs> could just be dangerous. But when we talk about housing wealth, then people are, are a little less agitated. I said, well, we've always used our housing wealth, haven't we? When you couldn't buy a house or cash, you got a 30-year mortgage. When you wanted an addition or send the kids to college, you got a home equity loan or line of credit so you didn't have to cannibalize your savings. But now in retirement, What's an age-appropriate equity release strategy? And the most common and the safest is really the home equity conversion mortgage, H-E-C-M, colloquially known, did I say that right, as a reverse mortgage. So what is a reverse mortgage? Folks, I-J-A-M, it's just a mortgage. It's been around since 1961, became part of the federal government under the Federal Housing Administration, 1988. So it's not new, dangerous, or spooky. It's a home equity loan for retirees age 62 or better that allows them to borrow money from the value of their house. The difference is they don't have to make any monthly mortgage payments and they don't give up ownership or come off title to the property. And so that's a reverse mortgage. It's allowing you to use some of that built up value in your home and converting it into dollars that you're going to need for long and sustainable and happy retirement. So you mentioned uh, Don, that, that there's a line of credit associated with uh, a HECM? Sure. When you get a reverse mortgage, anytime you get a loan from a bank, there's a criteria that kind of underlines and say, well, how much is the bank going to loan you? Well, a traditional lender looks at your income and assets and credit score and debt ratio, a square. The government, the Federal Housing Administration, looks at the age of the youngest spouse, the value of the home, and the current interest rate, those three things. They go into a formula, a number comes out, and that's your reverse mortgage benefit amount in the middle of that triangle. Now, a reverse mortgage must be a first mortgage, so if there's any mortgages or home equity loans against the property, that gets paid off, and what's remaining is very important. That's called the line of credit, the line of credit. So that is the money you have available in your reverse mortgage after you paid off any outstanding mortgages, is the line of credit, and that's a powerful feature, Bob, because the line of credit is a growing line of credit. On your chart here, you may see um, an example across the top of a 400, 600, 800, and a million dollar home, and at age 65, you'll notice what the borrower can receive. So look at a $600,000 home, and they're getting about $195,000, but notice 20 years down the road, it's grown to $751,000. 30 years down the road, it's grown to $1.5 million. Now, that's critically important because that means you've got a fourth bucket in retirement. You've got your income bucket, Social Security, pension, employment. You've got your investment bucket. You've got your insurance bucket, fixed and variable annuities, whole and term life insurance. But your fourth bucket, which was just on the screen, is your housing wealth bucket, which is this growing line of credit. And that's going to be the undergirding for how we talk about creating an extended health care plan or long-term care plan. Right. Uh, a, a curious question before we move on to funding long-term care is the notion of the line of credit growing. Uh -huh. Is that growing independent of the value of the house rising, appreciating, or is it tied to some sort of interest rate calculation? Thank you, Bob. If you go back to that chart, you'll notice the line of credit is growing independent of the home's value. So it's going to grow regardless of if your home goes up or down. And Don, why is that? Well, in 1988, at the seating of the 100th Congress, the signing of the 40th President Ronald Reagan, the architects of the program simply said the unused portion, called the line of credit, is going to grow. 
So it grows at the one-year Treasury bill as the underlying index plus the lender's margin and 0.5 um, for HUD. Uh, HUD adds on to that. So it's growing. It cannot be frozen, capped, canceled, or reduced like a traditional home equity line of credit as long as you're meeting the requirements of the program, which are live in the house, take care of it, pay your taxes, and keep insurance in force. So it's really a powerful feature. I call it a relock, the retiree's line of credit or the reverse mortgage line of credit versus a HELOC. So if you hear me talk about a relock, that is the age-appropriate release equity release tool that I most encourage people to look at real good. Right. So in the article that you wrote for Retirement Daily, you also talk about how the line of credit can be converted into three types of monthly payments. Tell us more about that. Well, when you when you get a reverse mortgage, the money you have left over, uh, 99.8% of the people in July of this year uh, use the reverse mortgage line of credit. But you could take it as a monthly payment. And I think I have a, an, an article, there's a chart there um, that says that same $195,000 initial line of credit, you see on the chart, if you get to age 85, it's 751000 now that can be converted into a monthly payment, a 10-year payment, means as long as you're living in the house and have the loan, or a five-year or a 10-year payment, or whatever um, a length of time you may want. This becomes important as we talk about a long-term care plan, because typically um, when we're kind of juxtaposing it against a traditional long-term care policy or linked benefit life insurance, the amount you get is daily or monthly, and we'll talk about it in the article, we'll reference that chart there. So yeah, you can have in a line of credit, a lump sum, monthly payments. The most common use is the line of credit. All right, so now on to the topic of the day, how to fund a long-term care plan with all this wealth. Sure. You, you know, the, the government keeps repeating this statement. I just heard it the other day that the belief is 70% of retirees are going to need some form of, of long-term care. That's a big number. And in my 25 years of doing this, I found that it's the biggest overlooked and underplanned for expense in retirement. And it, it hit me front and center a few years back. My mama, who's going to be 92, at age 85, she developed her dementia, got to a, a place where she needed home care. $7,000 per month for part-time assistance. My one sister quit her job to help fill in the gap. My other sister went part-time. And three years later, after a quarter million dollars had been spent, we ran out of money. And mom is in a memory care facility, a nice place, and compassionate, and we believe was the right thing to do. But it was a hard thing to do. Mama didn't own a home. If she owned a home, then these strategies that we're going to talk about here today would have been front and center because long-term care is a concern and you should have a plan for it. So where to begin? What's the first strategy that retirees <laughs> might consider? Well, of the seven in the article, one is self-insure with the growing line of credit. Self-insure just means I didn't qualify for a traditional long-term care policy or life insurance with a link benefit. And so, Don, what do I do? I said the good news is that 87% of retirees have a home. If you set up that line of credit that you saw earlier in the slide, let it grow, you could potentially have a ton of money, over a million dollars, at the, the danger zone between ages 85 and 90, or when most people begin to experience some of the impacts of um, needing long-term care. So number one is self-insure. Number two is one of my favorites, which is... Um, a lot of people are coming into retirement with a mortgage payment or home equity loan payment. And when you get a reverse mortgage, let's say you, you're making a payment of $1,500 a month. Well, one of the things we talk about is what happens if you um, eliminate that monthly mortgage payment using the reverse mortgage. That means you've got $1,500 a month um, now available to you. You can use that to pay the premiums on a traditional long-term care policy or life insurance, or you can uh, save that money in your investments that it grows that when you need it, it becomes a way to um, plan for it. And number three and four, or number four, I skipped three and I'll come back to that, but in the article number four, one of my favorite things is you take your monthly payment, you do a reverse mortgage, and you eliminate 
the need to make a $1,500 a month payment. However, you can choose to make a voluntary payment of that same amount. What's that going to do? That's going to build up your line of credit that it could be one, two, three million dollars down the road by using that particular strategy. So I, I don't know if I want to cover them all, but I do want to get to um, five, six, and seven. The reverse for purchase. Most people don't know that you can buy a home with a reverse mortgage. What does that mean? That means it sold. Here's a I sold my eight hundred thousand dollar home. And I moved into a six hundred thousand dollar home. Well, that's an easy, easy um, thing to do. Just pay cash. But what happens if you use the reverse mortgage on your new home? And so instead of having to bring six hundred thousand, now you only had to bring four hundred thousand. Well, you sold your house for eight hundred. You've got four hundred thousand dollars in cash left over, and that could be a long-term care plan. And I want to just tackle number seven. I'm not going to do number six. But number seven, to me, is, is the most strategic of all. And that's reducing the long-term care insurance premium pricing. A lot of people say, Don, um, traditional long-term care is very expensive. Or maybe the long-term care plan associated with an annuity or life insurance may be limited in what it provides. And here's what I say to folks. If you have a home, and you can turn your home into a growing line of credit, like the chart we saw earlier, there are four moving pieces when you're planning premiums on a traditional policy. How much you get per day, how long you get it, what the inflation rider is, and then what the elimination period or the waiting period is. How long do you have to wait before benefits kick in? So I say to folks, so let's take a policy you're getting in the Typical waiting period is 90 days. That is, you've got to self-fund for 90 days, and then the policy kicks in. I said, go back to the person who presented the policy or do the research and see what happens if you make your waiting period 365 days, one year. And people, down that's, that's so long. How am I going to pay for the care for one year? Well, that chart you saw, that line of credit can cover you for one year or more. But by doing that, you're going to dramatically reduce your premium amount. What if you take your inflation rider? You wanted a 4% inflation rider. That made the premiums very expensive. What if you reduced it to 1%? Well, the concern is, well, Don, that's not keeping up with inflation. But the line of credit in your reverse mortgage is growing today around 6 to 7%. That, in essence, could become your inflation rider. And so when we look at it, the article just unpacks, and I hope brings hopefulness to the reader that says long-term care is going to be a challenge and we've got a plan for it and you've got to use all four of your buckets to do so your income investments insurance and your housing wealth bucket and using them in a coordinated fashion can help you to create a plan give you peace of mind and that you can sleep better at night yeah so don just one follow-up question as you and i know oftentimes people wait until the last minute to do some of the planning tactics that you're suggesting the housing wealth oftentimes people refer to as their break glass asset mm -hmm. um, what's your thought about doing this far in advance of a crisis emerging or doing it at the <laughs> point of crisis sure sure i mean the best time to get flood insurance is probably before the flood <laughs> <laughs> and, and so my daughter came to me and Dad, she's 30. And imagine her saying, would it be better for me to start saving for retirement $5,000 a year now or wait till I'm 50 and save $10,000 a year? Where well, every one of your readers or watchers would say, no, you start saving now because you, you take advantage of compounding interest. The same is the prevailing wisdom with a reverse mortgage. And this is not my research. This is Dr. Wade Fowle. This is the American College. This is Center for Retirement Research. This is uh, Dr. Harold Davinsky. Who's the guy that won the Nobel Prize? Robert C. Merton, who teaches at MIT. All of them would say the same thing. The optimal time for looking into and establishing a reverse mortgage, if you're planning to stay in your home, is at the onset or early in retirement to take advantage of compounding interest. And that's certainly my plan. I can't wait to start mine in four years. And my wife and I are going to buy a house and use one of the strategies. Why? 
we're going to do it and make a voluntary payment so that when I'm 90, we'll have about $3 million in that reverse mortgage line of credit. And that's because we couldn't, I couldn't get a traditional long-term care policy, so I've had to put some alternative thinking. So I'm doing this personally. So, so then the last question is, assuming that someone never had to use their line of credit and they go to sell their house at some point, they get, they get some money? Not any money, or what do they get? Well, the, the line of credit, I tell folks, think of this as a credit card or a traditional home equity line of credit. The bank said, hey, you've got two or $300,000 over here if you needed it. But if you didn't need it, all of that equity remains in the house. So you get the equity in the home because you didn't use your line of credit. Don, I think we covered the landscape here. Anything we missed or just bears reemphasizing? No, I think having a, there, there are 52 strategies for using home equity and your retirement years. And we're just taking a few at a time. Long-term care has to be one of the biggest concerns. I thank you, Bob, for allowing me to write about it. Yeah, thank you, Don, for sharing your knowledge and wisdom on this really important topic. So thank you. Thank you.